Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Before we get into today's video, I've got a pond update for you. So here is today's update on the pond. As you can see, we have our initial layer of ice on here for ice skating this winter. However, it got up to about 40 degrees today and around the outer edges is starting to melt a little bit. And right now it's only about an inch thick. So in order to ice skate safely, you need to have at least four inches of ice. And there's a chart you can Google that'll give you uh, ice dimensions and what you can put on it. I think like six inches, you can start doing snowmobiles and four wheelers, nine inches, you can take a pickup truck out on it. Let's go ahead and walk down here and we'll take a look at at the spring and see what kind of water we're getting out of the spring right now. So there's the flow we're getting out of the spring right now. We haven't had any meaningful rainfall or snowfall or snow melt in a little while. So that is just the spring. It's not a real strong producer, but I think it'll be you know, enough to fight off evaporation in the summertime. Now, what we have going on with the ice here is actually like perfect conditions. Like I said, it got up to about 40 degrees today and it just melted the top layer. We still have, like I said, about an inch underneath, but it almost naturally Zambonied the pond. So if we get down to about 15 degrees tonight and then we have nothing but cold weather throughout the rest of this weekend, this is gonna be like glass. I'll probably still come out here and Zamboni it if there's a little bit of roughness to it. But uh, yeah, with the way the weather worked out this week, this should be just about perfect. So here's another look from up on top of the pond dam. I would say in terms of fullness, we're probably surface area wise about 60 to 70% full. We just need to go around that outer edge and up on the beach area up there. And then in terms of volume, we're, we still got a long ways to go up. It's probably only maybe 20 or 30% full in terms of volume. So that is the update on the pond. Now to the point of today's video. Let me start by saying, this is the whole reason why I love YouTube so much. It's just how easy it is to share ideas. And I've got three ideas that I wanted to share with you guys that I think a lot of you will get some benefit out of. Let me show you what they are. So as you can tell, the shop is really starting to look a lot better than it used to. We're gonna do a full shop tour video coming up here. But the first idea that I wanted to share with you guys, and a lot of people have been asking about this in the comments, is these firewood racks. They look an awful lot like the full-size IBC totes that we store our firewood into season. And that's exactly what they are. Uh, Doug was actually gonna teach me how to weld for my first welding project. We were gonna build some firewood racks just out of some angle iron or some square tubing. And we got to looking at the IBC totes and he said, hey, would you mind sacrificing one of those IBC totes? We'll cut it down, re-weld it back together, and we'll take an outdoor uh, firewood storage tote and turn it into an indoor firewood storage tote. And we liked the first one so much, we did a second one. Now we've got one on either side of the wood stove. And between the two of these, I can go probably 12 to 14 days without having to restock firewood in this wood stove. And it's about 30 degrees outside right now. If you look at the temperature in here, it is 62 or uh, 72, 72 degrees. So this little wood stove is keeping us nice and toasty out here. So here's an up close look at how Doug put these together. Obviously the full size IBC tote is gonna be a lot bigger than these ones, but basically he just took the full size, cut it there, there, smushed it together and re-welded it back together. Did that on the front, did that on the back and did that on both of these sides here too. So you can see there's the weld all the way down. So you probably wanna make it about 18 to 20 inches wide just in case you get some longer pieces. Um, this one has a front on it, this one does not. I haven't decided which one I like better. Um, I burn a lot of junkier firewood out here, so I like that because this one is more of a cage and contains those odd shaped pieces better, but this one allows for some more stuff to kick out the front. So for you, any of you welders out there, there's an idea if you can get your hands on some IBC totes, they make awesome firewood racks. I've never seen another one like it. I think it's a great idea. This next idea is not mine. I found it on the internet. However, we did build it and make it happen. And that is this miter saw wall mount. If you've ever had a miter saw before, they can take up a lot of real estate in a shop or a garage if you let them. Mine before uh, was pushed up against the wall here, taking up a lot of floor space. And this just gets it up and out of the way. And it's a good place to always put it away too. Now, I am not a metal worker. Uh, I do a lot of woodworking projects, like I built these shelves here. But, uh, so I've got uh, two by fours from the sawmill. I had some scrap plywood laying around. One thing I did not have to build this is the two inch pipes that go in between. And basically all you're doing is simulating the stand that that goes on and clamping it to uh, the two inch pipes. So since I don't do a lot of metal working, I didn't have that stuff laying around and I texted neighbor Doug and I said, hey, do you have any uh, scrap two inch pipe laying around? I've got a project in mind. 
He said, bring the two by fours, bring the miter saw, bring the plywood over, we'll get it done. So let me show you this miter saw mount, how easy it is to get it on and off the wall and kind of the ingenuity behind it. Okay, so for starters, we're gonna go ahead and pull down the miter saw mount and get that set up. And then every miter saw clicks and locks into the stand. So if you look right here, the first thing we're gonna do since this mount is simulating the stand is just unlock it. We're gonna go ahead and pop it up off of there, pull it out. And then lock it to the stand. There we go. And just like that, in less than 60 seconds, our miter saw and stand is set up and we've got a place to put it back to that's convenient and out of the way and not taking up a lot of valuable floor space in the shop. So here's an up close look at what this mount looks like if you guys wanna build one for yourselves. Like I said, two inch pipes spaced exactly the same as the stand. And then if you look, we did put a strap up across the top just to keep it from wanting to tip out in case that lock doesn't hold it. So pretty simple project but uh, something that I had not seen before and I thought was a really great idea that I wanted to share with you guys. Now the next idea is not in our shop, it's actually over in Doug's. So we'll catch back up with you guys when we make it over to Doug's shop. All right, so we're back in Doug's shop. We seem to be spending a lot of time over here lately. What do you got for us today, Doug? Well, you know, it was uh, about three weeks ago, was uh, working on a buddy of mine's Jeep. We put new suspension, lift kit under it. Uh, my son and I put a brand new stereo in it. And as you've noticed, you know, we've gone through the garage here and, and organization and everything like that. And I spoke about always having a tool cart or a mobile cart for when you do a, a project offsite of, you know, direct reach for grabbing tools and stuff. So, you know, last week when I did uh, this Jeep, was working on it. And this is no exaggeration. This is what the top of the, the tool cart looked like at the end of the day when I was done working on the Jeep. And... It just gets very, very frustrating for me, for one, because I like to have stuff organized, and two, it's very difficult to work out of this cart. Um, and I'd like to reference back to, you know, two days ago, Adam sent me a video <laughs> on uh, Wrangler Star, and he, you know, if you, if you haven't seen his video yet, he talks about his tool cart and how he keeps everything in it. And if you watch closely as he goes through his cart, he's, he's literally pulling everything out, and explaining what tools he's got and uses in his everyday tools and all that. Well, that's that's fine if you're working on the same piece of equipment day in and day out. You know, every every month you might need to go out and work on your tractor or whatever. Um, here, I don't do that. I usually have a, a completely different project. With a different set of tools. Yeah, you know, one, one day I might be welding. One day I might be doing electrical. Might be doing carpentry. Might be doing you know, plumbing, anything like that. And that's right? that's what Wrangler Star said was he said toolboxes are where tools go to die. And you and I both kind of disagree with that, that if you put them back where they go at the end of the day and then you use your tool cart if you've got to go mobile, yep. you know, you take them with you or you leave them in the toolbox if you're working near, near the toolboxes. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he's got a great program and he's got, you know, a million some followers. But when he did that tool cart, I, I, I watched that video and I kind of scratched my head. And I said, you gotta come over and do a video. I think this might be able to help some of your viewers. And I know you've got some other videos coming up on uh, garage stuff. So I thought maybe this would be a perfect opportunity. But the whole reason for this is, is you know, if I'm working on something, I've got the sockets at impacts, uh, dead blow hammers, just about everything that I would use for a project for a vehicle. Um, I don't do motor work, so I don't have those type of tools, but general maintenance, oil changes, uh, lift kits, you know, things right. like that. You know, these are a lot of the tools that you would use. And nine out of the 10 of the times, I'm sitting on my rear end, working, changing a tire, down underneath doing something with suspension or whatever. So as I'm down on the ground and I'm working on stuff, here's what I'm doing. I'm looking for, looking for the, 
Yeah, the 21 millimeter, there it is. Yeah. And then you lean back and slide under the vehicle again. And it just, it got to the point where it was borderline ridiculous and frustrating. So, yeah. Well, and I, I, know said, you, I know you from looking at your tool carts or your, your toolboxes, you like things very organized. That's one thing we talked about is your toolboxes are organized. There's no reason for the tool cart not to be organized. No, and I, and I know, I, uh, I've seen a lot of people that do a tool cart, a mobile tool cart, and, and this is generally how they look. At the end of the day, this is how they look. All their tools, you know, they're laying on the floor, they're on the vehicle, they're scattered throughout, and then they're thrown right back on the top. And it's just difficult to work out of. So what I did was I looked at everything I was using and I went, how can I make a place for these things so they're easily accessible when I'm working on a vehicle and that I can pull this card up and, you know, get to the things and, and just make it much more user friendly. And it, it all goes back to creating the place for the tool where you're using it at. So, you know, as we go from, you know, the problem to the solution, which is over here, we're going to talk about where you placed the, the places for all of these tools. Yeah. And, um, you know, this, this other cart that I got, I got it off of Amazon. I got it, oh, I don't know, two years ago. And it was a very cheap cart. It was $49.99 mm -hmm. on Amazon. I looked it up last night and it's $99.99 now. So it's doubled in price. Like everything else. Yeah, so I thought, well, heck, I can't say it's a cheap cart now because it's doubled in price since, <laughs> since when I bought it. Right. But what it is, is it was it's just a, a service cart. It's a plastic service cart. And then one thing that really made it work out well is it's got aluminum legs on that one. Mm -hmm. So it allowed me to put um, screws in it and stuff and, and hold things. So um, I guess let's bring it over. Again, it's got four-way caster wheels on it. It'll swing and pivot. Yep. So when you're down on the ground and you're working on a vehicle and you need something, you can rotate the cart pretty easy. Yep. To get whatever tool you need to do. So um, if you guys have carts, do away with the two solid rear caster wheels and make sure everything's got four pivot wheels on it because you can pull it straight out, you can pivot, you can turn it, and you can do everything else. I just did that with my toolbox today. It's a game changer. Yep. I don't know why they don't just all come with four swivel wheels. Yeah. Is there, do you know, is there a reason? Uh, cheaper. Yeah, okay, that yeah, makes sense. Four swivels are more expensive than the, the regular casters. Now, as I go over this, you know, I, I custom made a socket tray. So I, I basically, on the back side, I pulled the two plugs out that you know the plastic caps the plastic caps how it comes from the manufacturer and then i just basically put some expanded metal some three quarter inch angle plate or uh angle bar and then made it so it fit into where i removed those plastic caps uh some magnets on the front of this they're a, they're a heavier duty magnet and i got those from lowe's and i've had those for a while and then i've got some other magnetic rails here that uh Actually, they look where they are, just like this. And I got those at uh, our local Harbor Freight that just opened up a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And uh, some Boy, they, they've been stealing my money, I swear. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I can't go in there anymore. It's so hard to walk in and not get <laughs> stuff. I mean, like this, just a simple little magnet that, that helps make things a little easier. Um, but as we go over this, so I've, I've got some more magnets, and I'll show you why they're where they're at. These are PVC pipes that I screwed to the aluminum, and then I wrapped them with um, hose insulation foam. Mm -hmm. Why would I do that? So I don't bang the side of somebody's car up. That's a good idea. You know, as you're, as you're in working on something and you move this cart around, you don't want to drag that piece of pipe down somebody's car, and they're pretty much, they're wider than the whole cart is, so the first thing you're going to hit should be that foam, and that's was but kind of the concept with that. You got bumpers. Yep. Yep. Basically bumpers. So, well, let's start off with the item that stays on the cart, and that's the paper towel holder down under there. Oh yeah. I picked. Uh, I picked that. It's basically just a a rod that had a plate on the bottom, and I pulled the plate off and put a you know self drilling screw in the side here. Yep. Just to just to hold that on, so it gives me a place for some paper towels. Because when you're doing an oil change and you're down on your back, you pull that plug out and it runs down to your elbow <laughs> yeah. and it's hot and it's warm. First thing you're looking for is a quick rag or a towel or whatever. So 
I just I'd like to have some paper towels on there. Well thought out. Um, and then we'll go through real quick and simple. So One basically, thing, we're gonna we're gonna take this disorganized tool cart and put it on here and just see how much more aesthetically pleasing this one is going to be when we take all these items and get it on this cart here. Yep. So what I did here was I, I took some PVC pipe again Yep. and I had to mount a board underneath this cart. So I drilled and counter, counter board some screws into this. If you look at the four screws, I just drilled and countersunk them in and then bolted it up to the board on the bottom because that board is what gives me the support to screw the, the PVC tubes in. And I just made a, a quick lever here to hold the tools in there as I'm pushing the cart around. This actually came off of a broken uh, snow shovel for a roof shovel. <laughs> so my latch there. So we'll go through here. Uh, so we got the big impact. We got a drill and the small impact. I could just take and put that up on there. So when I go mobile with the cart, they don't fall, they don't out the fall back. out. Yep. That was the main reason for that. Um, little uh, Milwaukee die grinder. I use that quite a bit on a lot of different projects. Let's say I cut a bolt off and I want to clean and, and chamfer the end of a bolt. So I just made a little spot for that to sit into. Um, the sockets. I don't know what sockets I'm going to use when I go work on a vehicle, so I get my my uh, three eighths set. Yep. And made the made the trader work for there. Now that works for the half inch drive and the the quarter inch drive sockets as well. So that sits up there now. And oh, well, let's yeah, we got to have a flashlight somewhere because you always need a flashlight. So we stick that on a magnet. Pick up some of the screwdrivers that were in here. And what you're doing right now is what you're trying to avoid. Literally, I, as I'm working on a vehicle, I'm looking for, okay, where'd they all go? Right. You know, so that's what I do there. So the PVC on the back side, there's one small enough, and then I made a couple of slots for the screwdrivers that I would use. Um, probably we'll use dental picks somewhere. So... I can just take and put them because what I did was I mounted one of those magnetic rails on this side, one on this side, one on this side, and one on the face, and then there's two of them on the face here. And there's a lot of uses for that. And as I load this up, so you need a breaker bar to, to break loose a lug nut or whatever you might be doing there. Throw that in there. A couple hammers, mallets, you will use them. Oh, I'm sure we're going to use that ratchet somewhere. We've got some pliers that we got to go through. And, and one thing that I had to keep in mind when I did, did these is I didn't want, them, didn't want them sticking out to where you would get cut on them or get hurt or whatever. So you can set them up there like that. You can put that there. And some of the different wrenches that we would probably use, or I do use. So all they did was, because there was a wooden board under here, it made it real handy to put some screw hooks in it. Right. So now I can literally take and hook on the wrenches that I might be using for this particular job. Go through, and then let's say I'm going to be using these two, or I am using them. I'm working on a vehicle right now, and these are the two I'm using. I just throw them on that magnet. And like you said, you're down under a car. If you need that wrench, you don't want to be reaching up here to grab it. You can just stick it right to that magnet right. there. And what it does is as you're working on a vehicle, and, and I'll show you with, like, let's say you're using the 19 and the 12 and the 16 sockets on a job. But I grabbed the whole tray because I didn't know what I was going to need when I started working on the vehicle. Well, the nice thing about that is, is I can literally set the sockets there for the particular job that I'm doing. And, uh, you know, if I need the ratchet or whatever it is, they're right there, right. handy. I'm on the floor, I'm underneath the vehicle. I can just look over and reach out and see that my socket's there. 
So the magnets are a big, uh, you know, pretty key to that. I can put those on there. Most tools are made out of metal, so. Yep, <laughs> put my Allen wrenches. And you gotta have your... Uh, torque wrench. Torque wrench. So we can throw that in there. And, you know, I got the drill and every once in a while I, I do need to, to drill some things out. So we can throw that on there. Got a flashlight. Every once in a while you gotta use a flashlight so we can put that in there. And then some of the advantages of the cart. I mean, you can literally see that other than a couple of the, the, the lug nuts I pulled out, this cart that was a mess doesn't even look half as bad right right there um one thing with this is, is is a lot of times if you're taking a tire off instead of having these things laying on the ground in front of you and you do that yep you kick them lug nuts everywhere well it worked out that when i put the board underneath i took a piece of thin aluminum and put it on the front there so when i take lug nuts off or screws off Yep, you there's, a, there's a little pocket thing, it's just a simple, simple place to put them so you don't kick them or, you know, who knows. You, or, if, or if the guys are using an airline air impact wrench and they go to yank the, the hose, it doesn't yank and throw your spit your lug nuts all over the floor. It keeps them organized. So I told Doug, I said, Doug, you want to sell these carts. I mean, <laughs> this is pretty awesome. I, I think this, a lot of people could get benefit out of this cart. And the problem is, is this is so personalized for the type of work that you do. Really, this is just to get you guys thinking on what you can do to your tool cart. The magnets, the socket rails, you know, the, the PVC, you know, every every tool that you've got, you're going to need a different type of, you know, either the three or four inch PVC. Um, you know, you're going to need to personalize it the way that works with how you work. But the whole point of this is just to get you thinking on some different things you can do to get the tools out of the center bay here, put them elsewhere. So when you need the center bay for other stuff. Now, the nice thing is, is now these center trays are where I can put the parts I pull off of. Right. Let's say I pull off an alternator or I take a bracket off or something. I can, I, now I have a place to set that on the cart. You don't need a second cart right. for the parts. And, and if I needed to work on it, you know, and then every time you take something off, you have nuts and bolts, right? All right? So as you're down underneath the car, you're pulling out a, uh, a motor mount bolt or whatever and you don't want to lose it you can literally just throw all the bolts on the magnets that you just <laughs> took off yeah. they don't go wandering off on the floor you're not looking all over chasing them you know and literally when you're you're down on the floor and you're working under something the nicest thing to do is to reach over here grab your wrench and keep on going a lot of times I find myself landing on my stomach we're laying it here. Mm -hmm. And do you know how many times you swear looking for your wrench? Because <laughs> you're, it you're laying and on it's it. It's laying right beside you. Yep. So, I mean, it's literally, and I'm laying on the floor just to show you how easy this is. I need my hammer and I need my punch. Literally, right there, I can do what I need to do. And if you just get in the habit of putting them back, it works out well. I don't look at it as being OCD or anything like that. I look at it as being organized. It's just and efficient. Yeah, it's just a way to make your life a little bit easier. Um, so I thought, well, why don't we throw this idea out there? And if you get a chance, watch that Wrangler Star video on his tool cart. I'll, I'll put a link up to that video of, of Wrangler Star. I think it was something about the, the top 100 tools that every uh, professional homeowner should own. And he's, he was talking about how he works out of his tool cart and he had all of his tools just like this one here. Everything scattered up on top. And uh, it was kind of funny. We were just over here working on that miter saw mount. Yep. Yeah, Adam says, oh, have you seen the Wrangler Star video? And I was like, no, I, you know, I was working on this cart. And he says, oh, I got to send you that video. <laughs> I literally, I sat down and I started watching that and I went, I, that's great. I understand the, the, the need to have a mobile cart, but I couldn't fathom dealing with having them all lay in that tray searching and looking for things well i don't think anybody can argue down in the comments that this is not a huge improvement over what this cart was here before well it all goes back to there's got to be a better way right if if you're working on something and doing something and you're you're experiencing that frustration and thinking there's got to be a better way take the 
10 minutes or an hour or whatever it is, sit down and think about how can you make it better? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, and literally, I built this two weeks ago after I've been living this mess for years and years and years. And yeah. I, I finally went, you know, what am I doing? What? I can make it easier for myself. So, well, and that's what, you know, I, I told you guys we're going to be doing a full shop tour over at our place because, you know, less than a month ago, we were living in, you know, complete disorganization and we've actually got our shop looking pretty good right now and you just get to a point in your life where you're tired of not being able to find tools and yeah. you get you get fed up and you know i my entire christmas and new year's break i spent organizing the the garage and the shop so and and i think i said it pretty plain and clear in the, the other video we did over here when you do this it will just make you happy. Yeah, I walk in my make garage now. I had a buddy come over earlier today and normally I wouldn't have invited him into the garage because it was so disorganized. And today, had him come over, showed him the shop and I, I he was- He said, hey, look at this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was proud of it. And yeah. there's, there's something to be said for that. All right, well, thanks for stopping over and letting me show you my idea of making my life a little bit more simpler every day at a time. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, guys, the whole point of this video was just how much I love YouTube and the whole purpose of it is to share ideas, at least in my opinion. If you guys got any good ideas out of this, give me a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a big thumbs up. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.